Hello guys, my name is Armin. Today in our series Learning Revit, we want to create grid lines and adding columns to grid intersection. So we're going to start with creating grid lines, talk about the spacing, the movement of them, how we can lock them, how we can label them. And we can go to the columns and we're going to apply the structural and architectural columns to grid intersection. And also we're going to talk about how we can use some tips and tricks to align the column or to add a bunch of columns at the same time to grid intersections. Without further ado, let's jump into our Revit so we can start creating our grids. So for the grid lines uh, adding, we need to go to the architecture tab all the way down under the datum panel, you have grid. So let's click on that one. And then you can basically start from one point to the second point. And you can pay attention how the location of the bubble works when you start from one side to the other side. It basically changed the location of the bubble. But don't worry, you can kind of turn those on and off later on if you want. But I want to show you how you can do it. And also in the draw panel on top, you can see you can draw a straight line. You can do a little bit of the arc and then three point arc. So this is on one side and you can also go to a different like on the basically different axis like on Y axis and then all the labeling is customizable. So you can do the first one and when you keep um, adding uh, Revit recognizes the new letter or the new pattern and basically follow that one up. So you can basically custom those, make sure they're unique. Um, you can align them, but also you'll be able to give them a different uh, length. And as you can see, the bubbles can be turned on and off by that checkbox. So if you check the box, it's going to add on both sides. So let's just add all the sides. So we have bubbles on both sides of it which is going to be when you create a drawing i think that's going to be helpful to have it on both sides um and then the next one when you click on one grid you basically can see this um kind of lock right so basically it's locked that grid to other grid and you cannot move it if you want to do it separately you just click and basically move it simply so when it's locked everything moves together if it's unlock only only one grid when you unlock it you'll be able to kind of move that one only um so this is basically is going to help you make sure if all the grids want to move in one direction you lock all of them and if you unlock one you can do it also right here you can see you can adjust the spacing between the grids you can basically click on it give you a dimension you can do it there's a 2d and 3d so 2d uh extend controls the 2d view such as section or elevation and 3d controls the grid in 3d view like that basically 3d view that you have so just make sure if you want to do a 2d or 3d you can have the controls in 2d section or 3d sections the other one i want to show you the multi-segment so if you click on it you can have uh, a multi-segment grid so you click on it you go up let's just go right here to the left to the right and up uh, i think that's enough when i'm done i'm just gonna go to the modify so uh cancel the command and right now if i'm gonna finish click that one yes i have multi-segment grid um i also have these um so if you have like a scale and you have a bunch of bubbles into each other you can basically use that elbow to kind of move them up and down extend them and basically give them a different shape do not have all the grids in one location so right now let's just put some columns we have architectural we have structural let's start with architectural so it's pretty easy if you look at it on top you're going to go through all of this but you have the height and the depth um, and also right here you can select different type um, so let's do the height um the, it's unconnected it means you just give it a the height and it goes all the way up it's not going to get connected to any level but if you want to constrain it to a level you can pick like a level two so right here i'm just clicking in the intersection and easily is going to place the columns with the nine feet and right now i have all the architectural in there so it's simple as that you can basically click at the intersection place your column let's just go back do the structural column so again the structural column you can 
pick um, a different shape or uh, you can have load the family right now we're looking at the vertical we just look at the slanted later on so simply same thing you follow click an intersection add a column so right now if you have all the grids if i click at grids it basically put a column at the grid intersection so i'm gonna select these two grids at the bottom and you guys can see it's gonna place two columns at the grid intersection and when i hit finish it's done columns are placed there is another one going to help a lot it says at columns this is where the architectural columns are located so i'm going to select all of these columns that have architectural and then you guys can see basically putting all the structural columns inside the architectural columns both following the same thing height or depth or unconfined or you can con uh, constrain it to one level and basically that's going to be the easy way to place the column it's going to be really really fast so let me just go um turn okay let's just have another elevation on less north go to a view i have two different views right so i want to show you that the we are working on a 3d plane which is going to be and happening on all the views so i'm selecting on the level one grade four you can see it on the north elevation view if i change anything and move it's going to update it in all the views so if you're working on one views that thing that um, uh, action or task is going to be updated in all the other views for you to see so this is a great um, feature in revit especially when you get to like a more complex uh, modeling. So the last one I want to basically show you is when you adding a grid, uh, Revit is going to follow the last, uh, basically like last default or whatever we had. So we started with D, it's going to start with E because the last one we put D. So if you want to change it, you simply add a number and you'll be able to kind of uh Revit is gonna follow that and it's gonna do the let's say number instead of the letter but the other note that i want you to pay attention is it's not gonna adjust the call the numbers like between two and three it's not gonna adjust because you are adding more and between two two and three it's gonna be six so it's not gonna adjust this and right here 3d view you guys can see we put some columns architectural columns uh, and some uh, structural columns where the grids are how the grids look like thank you guys for watching today's episode learning revit so in this episode we reviewed how to create grid lines and how to apply the columns to grid intersections if you like the content please subscribe leave a like and also let me know in the comment section down below if you are using a different way to apply your columns or you have a different workflow to create the grid lines and applying your column to grid intersections. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next video.